Now that our rule class is completed, let's quickly compile all the files. So npm run dev. And once everything has been compiled, let's open our editor, open our main index.blade. What we need to do is to add the submit button. And we're going to add it right after this field set. So we're going to go for button and it's going to be of the type submit. And let's add the class button to it. And within we are going to have I with the class fast far check F A F W. Uh, this is just going to give us an icon from the font awesome and then submit for the label. We now save it and preview everything in a browser, reload it, and there we go. So if I now open view console and select the form wrapper. Let's have a look at the errors. What we're going to have if I submit now, nothing is going to be added because we don't have required for these fields. Uh, so let's just add one item. And there you go. You can see the minimum rule has been triggered. The same will happen for the last name. And if we go more, actually, we can't add more than 30 characters because if we go back to our editor, you will see that I've only specified the max length for nine. So let's just change this to actually 30. This way, any user that is using the interface will not be able to go over 30 anyway. Okay, so all that's fine. Now, one thing, if we go back, I'm going to refresh it. Uh, check our input. Obviously, at the moment, we don't have any reference to our errors. So we have errors within the wrapper, but we are not passing these errors to the input to display any sort of validation. So the next thing we're going to do, if we go back to the editor, uh, next thing what we, uh, we are going to do is to pass these errors to our input. So error equals, uh, and it's going to be props, error. And the same goes for the other field. So now we need to add this error property to our input. So let's go inputs, input text. And right at the bottom, after the validation, let's add error. And this one is going to be of the type object. And because it's an object, the default value needs to return a function. And it's going to be new error instance. And again, my ID should automatically import it, and it did. I'm just going to move it up because I like these imports organized in, by length. So now that we have this error available within the text input, let's go recompile everything again. So npn run dev. So now files have been recompiled. Let's go back to our browser. And if we refresh everything, check our text input, you can see we have error entry with the errors. Let's now try and validate the form. So I'm just putting one here and one here. That should give us errors. And there we go. The same way as we have within a form wrapper, if we open our errors, the same input is now available from within our input text input component. Back in the editor inside of our text input, component, uh, let's add a few more properties. The next property I'm going to add, and actually this one is going to be right after the group, is going to be label. And it's going to represent the label for our input. Type will be string, and it won't be required. Some inputs we may not need label for. So the required will be false. And then scrolling down to the bottom, after the arrow, we are going to add a visible flag. Sometimes we may want to hide the input uh, when the form first loads, perhaps some sort of event later on we're going to be able to trigger, which will show it, hide it, and so on. So visible type will be Boolean. And by default, we are going to set it to true. So by default, the input will be shown. So let's now straight away put into use, we are going to add data property called show. And by default, it will take value associated with this property. So V Z ball, there we go. And now if we scroll up, let's wrap our input within a diff. And this diff, if I just close it here, this diff will have V show directive which will only show this input when the show property is set to true. Okay, let's scroll down. After the visible, the next one I'm going to add, the next few properties I'm going to add will allow us to style the input and this and the wrapper, this div around the input. So let's say the next property will be called input 
CSS class. If you are using different frameworks, let's say for the back end and for the front end, you may have Bootstrap on the back end, you may have Zeb Foundation on the front end, and classes associated with these inputs are different. So that's why you, having this property will allow us to obviously specify what class the input should have. With Zeb Foundation, we don't actually use any classes to style the inputs, whereas with Bootstrap, you do. Uh, so this option will allow you to obviously style it however you want. Okay, so we're going to have it of the type string, and the required flag will be set to false because it's going to be optional so false then we are going to have validation css class and before we actually do this this is actually going to be the same so let's just copy this string and require it false but this input css class we can also apply straight away so let's go for this input and after autocomplete class and input css class Okay, uh, this property validation CSS class will later on be passed through to another component, which we'll create in the following video, called validation. This one will actually take care of displaying the validation message. The next property will be for the wrapper, wrapper CSS class, and again, uh, wrapper with two Ps, there we go, and again, it's exactly the same thing, string and uh, false for required. Then we will have another wrapper, but this time error CSS class. So when there's error for this input, what class should be applied to the wrapper? And again, type string. But now, rather than required false, we are going to set the default to invalid because we have already styling inside of our SAS file for this particular purpose. Okay, then we are going to have wrapper CSS style. So if we want to apply any inline styling, we can also do this. And again, this is going to be uh, string and false. So let's just copy this. And the last one will be wrapper error CSS style. And the same thing, string and false. Let's now create a few computed properties. First one will be called is invalid so we know whether the validation has failed for this given input and this one will return this error and then has this name so if within the errors collection we have error for this particular input's name then that means this input is invalid the next one will be show validation and this one will return this is invalid without brackets because it's a computed property and then this display validation because we only want to display validation when we actually want it to be displayed and we obviously if you may remember here from within the initialize if the input is not an array if it's an object then that means that we actually display in validation going back to our index plate you'll see that this top one will display validation whereas this one because it has array for the validation property will not so we will have to manually add validation messages the component will create later on add above this text input okay so uh, this is show validation the next one will be called computed validation css class And this one will return object, which will have the validation CSS class. If we scroll up, this validation CSS class as the property, which will represent the class name. So because it's a, an internal property, we need to wrap it with in within the array. So this validation CSS class. So this will actually return whatever is associated with this property as a key and then the value it will only be displayed if this is invalid if our input is invalid so display this validation css class only when this input is invalid the next computed property is going to be called computed wrapper css class and this will be applied to this div surrounding the input and here we are going to return an array the first item will be of an object type and this time we are going to use this wrapper error css class this class will be applied to the given element 
when this input is again invalid. But we will also want to apply this wrapper CSS class, which is going to be always applied to the wrapper regardless of whether the input is invalid or not. Obviously, this will only be applied to the given uh, element if this property has any value because by default they all set to false. And the last property we are going to add during this video will be computed wrapper CSS style. And this one will apply any inline styling that we might want to apply to the wrapper of this component. So return again array and we're going to go for the object. It will return this wrapper arrow CSS style this time when this input is invalid. And we will also apply any other styling that we might want to apply to this wrapper, whether or not the input is invalid. So this wrapper CSS style. Now, if we save it, let's scroll up and actually apply this to our wrapper. So we have for the class property, we are going to use computed wrapper CSS class. And for style, computed wrapper CSS style. If you would like to learn more about the computed properties of Vue.js, navigate to Vue.js.org, search for computed properties and watches, or click on the computer properties and watches on the left-hand side to access the documentation.